today is finally the day. I'm headed off to Vancouver to pick up all of our plants that we ordered from Van Nort. Uh, the reason that I am going to Vancouver and that the plants aren't just coming to us in Kelowna is that there is mountain passes and they're still really cold. Uh, it's still, it was minus 11 Celsius uh, as I was driving here this morning. And so things like the dahlias, they just wouldn't survive the transport. But if I go pick them up myself, I can put them in the, you know, the really frost sensitive stuff can go in the cab of my truck. And then uh, I've got a big insulated tarp that I'm going to uh, tarp down the load in the back. And I'll head out in the afternoon on the way back. So it should be a little bit warmer then and uh, everything should be fine. And that way we can get everything, uh, like all the dahlia tubers potted up about a month earlier than we did last year. Cause last year we had to wait a long time until it was warm enough for them to ship over this mountain pass. I'm on the road today. I've been driving for a couple hours already and I still have a couple more hours to go. But look how beautiful it is up here. This is a beautiful spot. This is, this is genuine BC. I'm out of the mountains now. They're still surrounded by mountains, but now I'm down in the Fraser Valley. And this is a really cool growing region in uh, in Canada. Just like the Okanagan is really unique with its uh, dry summer heat. This is more coastal. It's, it's kind of like one of the warmest, but temperate uh, warm winter areas of Canada. And the soil is really, you know, fertile. It's this big flat river floodplain area and it is the surrounding area to Vancouver so uh, it's all pretty built up once you get you know closer into the city but there's lots of really cool farms and uh, I might just I'm a little bit early so I might just take a little bit of a drive around I'm not much of a big city person. I'm more of a medium city type person. So coming to Vancouver isn't my favorite thing to do. I got the first step done already. So we had to do a shop at Ikea. We are getting stuff for all of the rentals that we've been doing. Now it's off to go pick up all the bulbs and then it's back to Kelowna. I have arrived. Time to go find somebody and get all this. back home now. The GPS says four hours back to Kelowna. 10 boxes of dahlias inside the cab here with me so that they don't get cold over the pass. But uh, I think at the time of day that I'm going anyways and, and with the sunshine that uh, none of it is gonna get any sort of damage. We'll be smooth sailing all the way home. I'm making a little pit stop here. Like I said, I don't really leave Kelowna very often. And uh, this spot is pretty special to me. Uh, this was like one of the first places that I spent a bunch of time when I moved out west uh, to BC. In 2003, my buddy and I hopped on our motorcycles and rode around Canada for like a summer. Pretty much we headed straight out west. The first spot that I spent, you know, kind of a, a handful of days in BC and it's just gorgeous. It's right, it's right on the number one highway, so there's cars going by all the time, but uh, it's just like beautiful little, you know, mountainside lake. 
we, we spent uh, I think a weekend here and we just started hanging out here so much that we got to know a bunch of the people in town and you know just kind of went off from there and had a little adventure. thought I'd share it with you guys because it's a pretty special spot to me. This is uh, kind of where I fell in love with BC. I'm calling it here. I'm leaving and I'm getting back on the road. I'm gonna get home. There's like a little service road just over there. And uh, I was I was so over setting up my my little tent thing that I had at this point in my journey back in 2003 that I just sleep next to my motorcycle. I put a tarp down and I just sleep next to my motorcycle. And I remember waking up covered in snail trails. All these snails had been like slithering over me as I slept. <laughs> uh, you know, I think that jacket had a couple snail trails on it for the rest of the summer. I don't think I ever washed them out. They, they never came out. I am still driving. I am getting close though. Uh, just down in that valley there. That's the Okanagan Valley. But what I was thinking is this video isn't really so much about uh, picking up all of these plants anymore. It seems to be more about showing off how beautiful BC is. And so I wanted to show you one of my personal favorite little like viewpoints. So it's like I got a truck going by. Yeah. So. One of the most beautiful spots, I think, in, in BC. When you go down just a little bit further, this is kind of like the last point I can stop so I can set up my camera. Um, it, it's this amazing view of Okanagan Lake. Like, the Okanagan is just gorgeous. And it's, it, whenever I see this particular view, to me, it's always like, I'm, I'm home, you know? Because uh, the only time I ever see it is when I'm coming back from you know Vancouver or somewhere else up north and and uh, you know I don't really see it on my day to day but it's such a gorgeous view and I was like whatever I'm gonna stop set up my camera and show you guys so that's what's coming up next I realized as I was coming down that the viewpoint is kind of off to the right of the camera so you guys couldn't see anything. So in my commitment to the shot and, and how beautiful this uh, lake view is, I am going to get out of my truck and use my legs and walk up there so that I can get a shot of the lake. I made it. I'm out of breath because I ran, but check it out. Isn't this gorgeous? Right behind me over here, that's uh, Okanagan Mountain Park. So that's all parkland kind of along there. And then the lake is Okanagan Lake. And just up, can't really see it, but up around that, uh, that bend there on the other side of the lake, that's Kelowna. It's pretty, pretty awesome looking here, isn't it? This is just amazing. I really wanted to capture this. It was worth expending some calories to get this beautiful shot in here. Hope you guys appreciate it. You should definitely come visit sometime, but you know, if you never get a chance to come to BC, you know, at least you get to see it here.
I just told Serena how I stopped at the lake today in Hope and she's saying that she's never been there before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think of all the, all the good stuff? Bring my crazy eyes, bring yeah. my crazy eyes. I'm very, very excited to get opening this and get going. Yeah, that's a lot of work. Yeah, I'm gonna have to, I have all these perennials. I probably have, I don't know, more than 500, less than a thousand. Yeah perennials that I need to pot up because I don't think I'm gonna plant them out until after after you know we're into the season a little yeah. bit more so I want to get them into pots so that they're happy and then I need to get all those dahlias for our big sale all into their one gallons yeah. so I'm gonna be starting to burn through a lot a lot of that potting soil that I've been gathering over the last month it's um when I started thinking about the work that we have to do, we're like in it now. There's there's no end. Oh yeah. There's no end to the like jobs to do. I was working today thinking to myself, Ian has to do this, Ian has to do this, Ian has to do this, Ian yeah. has to do this. The jobs the jobs are long and many. Yeah, and then there's there's you know like just a lot of work for you to do too now. My seedling racks are getting full. And I haven't even started anything yet. I, I don't even know what's on them for them to be that full already. Yeah. It's worrisome. <laughs> oh, oh, are you okay? Your head is my elbow, you silly. Whoa. So I'm thinking at this point, it's been 13 hours that Ian has been working, which means that today was slightly longer than a market day. Yep. <laughs> I'm not done yet. 